Carl, have you got my artichokes for my artichoke and spinach? Wait a minute, these are avocados. Oh darn, you know I always get those two mixed up. It's an easy mistake. Well, one has petals and the other one doesn't. They don't even look alike. Well, they're both green and they both begin with the letter A and... And what? When you can make my favorite dip in the whole world with avocados, guacamole, please, Steve, please. Stevie, pretty please! Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, or maybe I should call you Stevie. Once uh, is enough, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> we have all of these avocados here. I want you to show folks your neat way of cutting an avocado. First of all, Carl, you want to make sure that the avocado is ripe. Now, how do uh, we tell if it's ripe? First of all, you, you would touch it like this so it's nice and soft, and you can touch your hand as well just to match that. that is, that's ripe then. Or if they're raw, uh, sorry, a little hard, they will be more line color and be very, very firm to touch. So what I would do first, I would just cut around the actual avocado like so, all the way around. And if I'm going to only use half of it, I will keep the pit in one side of it, wrap it with saran wrap, and then it won't turn brown, and then keep that in, in, the, in the fridge. So. And then all I would do is just cut it maybe two or three times down the center like so, and you can see can this is really the, Show the camera what you did there. Yeah, and we've got the three things so you, there. You, you, you cut it while it's still in it, its in, skin. In the skin itself, then it'll just peel off the side here like so, and then we'll just pop that onto the plate. One, two, three. It's coming off really easy. Really easy. It's just going to fall apart there for us. So you've got to cut and it's still intact, intact pretty much. Very, you very much. And then we'll just put a nice balsamic vinaigrette on there and away we go to the races. One, two, three. It will come off. Okay. All right. Just That's like so. a very, very good tip. Thank you very much for that. No problem. Okay, coming up on the program today, our guest is the novelist Lisa Moore, a wonderful novelist. You'll know her from her novels Alligator, February, and she's written much, much more, of course. Uh, we're excited to have Lisa on the program today. And what are we going to be cooking for her? We're going to be making a Bay Bulls lobster macaroni and cheese with Emmental cheese. Oh, mm. A fitting meal for a famous novelist. And we have Chef Chris Chafe with us as well. He's going to be making a dandy appetizer, so stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. And we are delighted to welcome to the One Chef, One Critic kitchen, the distinguished author and novelist, Lisa Moore. Thank welcome. you, Carl. It's Thank nice you. to have you. Nice to see you again after these many years. <laughs> well, it's a uh, thrill to be here. Okay. <laughs> I'm dying to learn something. Yeah. Yeah. We were actually, folks, we were just joking. The last time we were together, it, it was in a hot tub. So, <laughs> and that was a long time ago. So it's, it's, that's another story. Anyway. Uh, I, I had to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you like lobster. I absolutely love lobster. Me too. Well, Lisa, have we got a deal for you today? Actually, what we're going to be doing is a, uh, a lobster mac and cheese believe it or not so uh, we'll get started what we have here and I'm gonna get Carl to make a, a nice tossed salad with us just a little vinaigrette to give us a little bit of acidity there so I've got a cream sauce here already made and what I want you to do while I'm grating the cheese I'd like you to add a little bit of nutmeg and some seasoning and just stir it through and what I've got for cheese I've got an old cheddar cheese and I've got some beautiful Gruyere some Swiss Gruyere as well so I I'll can't ruin this no no you can't no you'll be fine <laughs> do, do, do you cook at all or uh, very poorly. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've mastered craft dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, we're, we're going to be okay then. We're going to be okay. A lot of my stuff is blackened. Okay. <laughs> 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 a nice bit of salmon then. <laughs> Intentionally or unintentionally. Unintentionally. <laughs> but I'm so, trying to sell it to the yeah. to the youngsters. Very so tell good. us about uh, about your growing up years. Uh, were were you always interested in writing, or were you one of those little girls who had a diary and? I I always was. Uh, I I. I read a lot when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I wrote letters to a, a cousin of mine who lived on the other side of the island in Cornerbrook, mm -hmm. and illustrated them, and they were fairy tales, really. They were totally plagiarized, but, <laughs> you know, I guess I was probably nine or ten, and yeah. I'd 
probably started then, mm. and I've I've done it ever since. I think you know Newfoundlanders so are. I'll just add the cheese to it. Then. Okay. Okay, that's yeah. sangria, and then our old cheddar cheese. Okay? I think we're I think we're born storytellers, actually. Absolutely. And, and of course, we come from that oral tradition where, you know, we were always kind of uh, handing down stories uh, through the oral tradition over years, over the years, and and then of course uh, we became writers. And, well. Uh, prolific artists in, 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 in many areas. Yes. Would well, you, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm, I'm teaching at the university now. I teach oh, creative I see, writing. Yeah. Yep. And it's, it, it's really exciting to see the stories that, it, like, everybody has a story. Everybody has a novel in them. Mm. That's what I, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But my students are so talented. It's, yeah. it's inspiring. That, that is inspiring, yeah. What age group would they be? Uh, they're and all different and ages. And excuse, yeah. uh, you know, they come, uh, a lot of them are, are, are students who are doing other courses, but yeah. then there are people who had stories that they want to tell their whole life, you know, and they're retired or they're just, they're just getting in there after, you know, 20 years of work and they, yeah, 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 yeah. they're burning to tell these stories. Oh my goodness, excellent. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Now you all, you, you also, you went to the Nova Scotia College of um, Art and Design. I did. So you, you must have intended to be a visual artist and, and then changed your mind? What, how I still paint. Oh, do you? I do. And Indeed, oh. yes, um, but uh, um, the the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design is uh, a lot of was a lot about conceptual art. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it was really about kind of pushing boundaries. And my painting tends to be um, landscape, and it's um, more traditional. It's a bit it's a bit traditional compared to the kind of mm. education in art that I That's had. Right. Yeah. But I think I take my experimental stuff out in. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. In, oh, go ahead. In in writing. You sure. Know? Yeah. But I love painting. Mm -hmm. So what I've got yeah. here, I've got some macaroni already pre-done. I'm just going to add the lobster to it, and then we're going to get mm. that sauce and pour it okay. all the way into there. Wow. So feel free. Do it. Yes, absolutely. Oh my goodness. There we go. Look at that. It's not even burnt. Not nice and rich there. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll stir it around and nicely seasoned, which oh, you did. Beautiful. And that'll be good. So we're but combining I'll... two of my favorite things here. Macaroni and cheese. I can take the cut. Yeah. And uh, lobster. It's gonna, my mother is going to be very jealous. <laughs> this is like the ultimate comfort food. Absolutely. And my sister. This is, this is where lobster is their thing. Mmm. They're mm. just... Lobster. Perfect. I'll take that now. Well, I'm going to use the same dish that I grated the cheese in because I don't want to waste any of that. I'm going to pop that in. Then I'm going to get some panko and some butter. And then we're going to top that. Oh, look how rich that is. Lisa, that's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. There we go. All on the top there. Perfect. And just enough for that pot. That crust for sure. So Very good. Lisa, uh, much of your writing is is set in Newfoundland and you use Newfoundland as a subject in your writing. Is is that by design, uh, or is or is it you know the old story of you know write what you know? <laughs> I think it's kind of I think it's both in a way. I mean I, I didn't I don't think I actually think oh, okay I'll write a Newfoundland story, mm -hmm. but the stories that I hear are Newfoundland stories like sure. you know that you yeah. hear every day and um, so you know I wrote a book about the Ocean Ranger and that yeah. is that's a story we all know and. Yeah. Um, and cot is a story about yeah. embezzling pot in, or, <laughs> yeah. uh, here in yes. the seventies, and yes. so Something those are all we know stories. a lot about. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's stories we've all listened sure. to, you know. Yeah. We've lived through, yeah. Yeah. Well, certainly, I mean, in the novel February, uh, when when I read that book, um, I, I worked in a newsroom at that time when that whole thing happened, and um, I mean that was seared in my and two of the two of the people I worked with had. One of my cameramen had a, a son on the Ocean Ranger, and, and he died, and another had a son-in-law, so it was very personally close at, at that time, but it, it, you know, it really kind of struck chords with me when I was reading the book. Oh, but you. I have to say that, uh, you know, that character of Helen was so beautifully drawn. Oh, thank uh, oh you. Oh, my God, it was such a wonderful book. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you deserved all of the praise and all of the accolades you got for that book. Did you get a lot of reaction from people who were really closely involved with the, that tragedy? Um, some people have, have come up to me and said, yeah. you know, talked about it. Um, yes, I've, I've, I've 
I, I've heard guess, from people. Yeah. I guess it would be hard, though, for them to yes, probably... Yes, and some of them, you know, haven't even read it because mm. it's too close. Yeah. But yeah. I, I have had a lot of uh, response from people who have lost people mm. on all kinds of industries. Right. Industrial accidents, yes. you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And even even people who've just had partners that they loved who died yeah. of natural causes, or yeah, it it is really a story about grief mm -hmm. in some ways. I mean, I think there are funny moments in it, mm. but um, a lot of people have felt that and gone through it, and mm -hmm. so. Mm. But yes, the people yeah. who have actually lost someone on the Ocean Ranger or who worked on the Ocean mm. Ranger uh, have. Mm. mentioned it yeah. to me and yeah very touching yeah yeah it, it, it it's a hard yeah. it's a hard one I, yeah. I know that's and a hard a, book to write it was a hard book to write uh, it felt very much like a a uh, sacred story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it was also a story that was passing out of living memory in a way you know because yeah. people who had experienced mm -hmm. it younger people were yeah. coming along who hadn't and it, I felt it needed to be yeah. told and what was it like when you found out that it had been on the uh, list of 13 for the Man Booker Prize, that must have been just... It was a, it was a real thrill. Uh, I was in a cabin way, way, way in the woods. Like, you, you know, it was a, it's an hour and a half to get in there. And I, suddenly my cell phone <laughs> rang and it was, it was uh, my publicist in Toronto phoning to say, you're on the Man Booker Prize. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like, I couldn't believe oh, it. Yeah. I can imagine, like, you know, I would have just fainted and, you know, <laughs> have to revive well, me with smelling salts. <laughs> I did call out into the woods. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. Okay, well, that looks uh, brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah, We've got our Parmesan cheese and our panko yeah, dressing. And I, I'm just going to pop down to the wine cellar now and Perfect. get a wine to go with that. And Excellent. You can pop that in the oven, I guess. Absolutely, okay. but what, before we put that one, at least I've already got one made. So okay, we'll just have great. a quick look at it. If you just okay, step back yeah. for one second, and we bring it out. And I made just a little bit bigger one here. I think I put four lobsters in this one. Wow. Just, just so there's enough for the crew as well. <laughs> you know, that's so. beautiful. Okay, there we go. Excellent. And we'll pop this one back in. Excellent. That's so beautiful, Steve. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Carl. Congratulations on uh, the Merchant Tavern, by the way. Thank you so much. Jeremy Bonia, uh, Raymond's, of course. And as you know, we've been making lobster mac and cheese, a very fancy schmancy mac and cheese. Well, much richer filling mac and cheese, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so you got the cheese going there and, well, lobster's kind of rich too, I guess. So. so I was thinking white wine, of course, that's kind of where I first run to. Um, Something uh, to kind of cut through that. Yeah, and, and have enough weight to kind of hold up to the weight of that dish because it that's is quite right. heavy. So it is. I have three white options, but I also brought a red option for those of people out there who don't like white wine at all. I would keep it kind of light when you go to the red. So I went with the Malifar Gamay mm -hmm. 2012. At $20, this is an amazing bottle of wine. Uh, no oak. Gamay is going to have a lot of sort of bright, fresh fruit to it. Very strawberry, very berry side of things. And great acidity. And I think that'll be okay. But my recommendations would be more on the white wine mm -hmm. side of things. So Tidal Bay. Uh, this is from Nova Scotia. This one's made by Benjamin Bridge. Now Tidal Bay is made by a few different growers in Nova Scotia. It's an appellation they started recently. Uh, it's like Sauvignon Blanc, but there's other local varietals in there as well, but there is Sauvignon Blanc in it as well. Mm. So it's very crisp and clean. It has a little bit of weight to it, but a lot of acidity, which is nice to cut through all that kind of fat. You also have the Raymond Chardonnay, Reserve Chardonnay from Napa. This is a wine that we've had for years, and I've, I've drank this for a lot of times, different times, and enjoy it. It's always consistent, always good. Not too heavy on the oak, but it's rich and full-bodied and a great Chardonnay but just as good, if not better, is the Poi Frise. This is from that area in, in Burgundy where you're getting the best Chardonnays. This is the 2013 mm -hmm. oaked Chardonnay, but not heavy oaked, and it's mm -hmm. French oak, so it's much milder and a little bit more delicate, but great acidity as well. So mm. these both have quite a bit of weight, and I think it hold up to that. Right, cheese. right, okay. Um, well, you know what? I am gonna go with the Poi Frise. It's a great choice. Because I just think that mac and cheese, that lobster mac and cheese, is crying out for this wine. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. A little bit more lobster on the top of our lobster mac and cheese. And let's go and join Lisa and Carl in the dining room. And I know they're going to enjoy it. There we go. Thank mm. you. 
the perfect wine for the perfect meal. <laughs> I thought perfect. you were going to say for the perfect guest. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. And the perfect guest. You absolutely are. And the perfect chef. Well, there we go, you see. There we go. Well, let's have a taste of this. Okay. taste, absolutely. Lobster mac and cheese. Who would have thought? Yeah. Just the right amount of Emmental, I think. <laughs> mm. That is so good. excellent. It's really... It's a keeper, I think. It's really rich. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. It's taken aback. I'm, ta I'm a bit taken aback because, I hate to say this, but in a lot of restaurants, if you had this, you'd have to search for the lobster. lobster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, love, I love the fact that, you know, first bite, I got all this lobster. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Lisa, uh, you know, talking about uh, the novel February, you, you adapted that for the stage. I did. What was that experience like? Were you happy with the way it turned out? Oh yes, I was. I it was, but it was a real learning curve for me because mm -hmm. the book is mostly interior monologue. You know, it's what she's thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. And the very first thing I learned is that's not what you do on stage. On stage, mm -hmm. people have to talk to each other. So that was a yeah. <laughs> that, that another was dimension a, altogether. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like you could just sort of lift the dialogue out of the novel and <laughs> no, because there's not very much no, in right. the novel. Yeah. And, and then I had two pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. One was, because this was my first play, one was, if you want a herd of camels running across the stage, don't write that, because nobody can afford to make that. <laughs> That's right, exactly. And the yeah. other piece was, if you want a herd of camels running across the stage, write it, and let the producer worry about it. <laughs> Do whatever you like when you're the writer. Yeah. So it yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, now, now, speaking of adapting, uh, you know, your, your novels to uh, other m forms, um, the, one of your recent works, Caught, is going to be turned into a television series. Yes. So how, how did that all come about? Well, Ellen Hocko uh, read the novel and uh, called me up and said, uh, Lisa, you know, what would you think of this? And I said, that'd be great. And he said, great, okay, well, let's, you know, get it signed up. And I said, well, actually, I don't own the rights, so my oh. publisher does. And he said, ah. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that all worked out so, beautifully. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm very excited to see, yeah. I think he's, you know, just a incredible ball of energy so yeah. so w what part will you play in that are you do you have any part will you be a consultant or oh i thought you meant in the tv <laughs> show <laughs> i was going to say i'm going to be the 18 year old <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um no i'm going to be a spectator and i think that that is you know really exciting to just yeah. hand it over and let other yeah. people run with it. Yeah, mm. like that's you know yeah. that's kind of thrilling. I think generally that's the way film directors like to operate. Anyway, <laughs> is like you know the last person they want on the set is the author of the novel. That's or for whatever. sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, what are you working on anything now, or what? I am. I've just I've just written a young adult novel. Mm -hmm. And is that uh, a new th thing for you? Yes, I I've never done it. Mm. And I just received my e my edits from my uh, editor um, at nine o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. this, oh my goodness! It's a it's going to be. There's a lot of work to do, oh. but it's a, it's really a lot of fun. This yeah. this novel. Um, it's just so like it immediately transported me back to being 16 years old. Mm. The protagonist is mm -hmm. so 16. it's a female protagonist. Uh, yes. Yeah. And she has a ditzy. Our mother, who is a conceptual artist. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's getting a little bit too close to home here. <laughs> no, that's the only. Uh, that's the only yeah. Uh, yeah. similarity. Okay. But it's a lot of fun. Mm. Well, uh, we wish you much uh, success in Thank the you. future, and keep those keep those novels coming because uh, you. you're an absolutely amazing writer and a credit to Canada. Perfect. Cheers. Here we go. Uh, coming up next, we will be meeting with Chef uh, Chris Chafe, who's going to be doing an appetizer for us, so stay tuned. Well, patrons of Spirit of Newfoundland, which is, of course, our famous dinner theater, uh, can enjoy a meal and entertainment in a relaxed, friendly atmosphere. But these days, you can also enjoy a nice uh, meal, lunchtime meal at least, in their Screech Room. Uh, codfish is a specialty, by the way. They operate the Happy Camper food truck, 
And they're also, which you may not have known, one of the official caterers for the Geo Center. And the person who runs all of this food operation is with us now. He's executive chef Chris Chafe, and welcome to One Chef, One Critic. Chef. Thanks. Thanks for having me, girl. Now, what are you going to be making for us today? So today we're just going to do a simple dish called a scallop and beet crudo. So crudo being the term raw in Italian. Um, right. So yep. we're just going to dress that up with some lime and some pickled radish, a little bit of walnut granola and some other various things. So I just start, what I have done here is I have some scallops stained in some beet juice. Yes, red it's, scallops. It just, it just <laughs> it adds. It beautiful, that did look at the vibrant <laughs> yeah. color of those scallops, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> it just adds a little bit of uh, just So will they the be that color all the way through? No, they'll be, you'll see now as I slice them. Mmm. And you get a it almost looks like a beet, how it's vain, doesn't it? It's yeah, you get a you get a different oh, look from it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. We can bring the plate over, Chris. Yeah, Chris, we see we can cut this. Yeah, we can yeah. put the plate right here. I like that. Yeah. Very colourful, isn't it? Very vibrant. So you just, just three little slices. You want to slice it thin because where it is going to be served. So now for this kind of slicing, you need a really good knife. <laughs> it, it, it helps to have a, a sharp knife for yeah. sure. You don't want to destroy the food. If you want to, if you saw through the that's food, right. you're going to break it all yeah, apart. That's right. So after I get to this far, you just want to, whenever you're serving anything raw, you want to put a little bit of salt. I use kosher salt only, and then just a tiniest little bit of lime juice, mm -hmm. just to start a cooking process. Mm. So there was nothing else done to them scallops at all. It was only just just beet juice. Just, just the beet juice. Yeah. So I guess you could use lemon juice as well if you yeah. wanted. Yeah, any citrus or even vinegar, anything of that nature that's going to kind of start the cooking process. So it's just a simple little vinaigrette, mainly based with some lime and some fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. And what is the grease? It's arugula. Some baby, oh, it's arugula. Baby okay. arugula. Yeah. So I'm just going to. I think in your. Uh, in your part of the world, where, where you uh, came from, Steve, they call it rocket. <laughs> rocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, they do. <laughs> and just some pickled beet. Yeah. And that's thinly sliced as well, isn't it? Yeah, everything is sliced nice and thin. Again, I went ahead and pickled some radish. I like to have, when I just have something raw like this, I like the pickled mm -hmm. elements kind of add some I'd call some that bite. A ribbon, a ribbon of... Yes, for sure. A ribbon of beet. So this is what you call a composed plate. Yeah, it's just, you know, plating's huge for me in terms of food. You know, eat with your eyes first, as something they always say. So yeah. it's just a little bit of a walnut and actually duck fat to add some richness, granola. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to add a little crunch to the dish as well. Oh, I see. Soft I see the, it's almost like a scrunchel, isn't it? Yeah, it adds yeah. the same kind of thing. It'll just give you a little extra texture. Yeah. We also have some little pickled baby red pearl onions. Okay. And last, but so these are least. like little shells. You could put yeah. something in them if you, you want. You could for sure. That's what I'm going to do right now, Carl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Goat cheese? Or? Yeah, just a little bit of goat cheese again. Yeah. Just a little more richness for the dish. It cut some of the acidity from all the lime mm -hmm. and all the all mm -hmm. the pickled things. You know, you're looking at ultimately you're looking for yeah. balance in any dish that you do. So you you know if you're going to he heavy on the the acid, you want to have some mm. fats mm -hmm. to cut it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's basically this is it. And I like to finish this with a little bit of the vinaigrette. Just on the scallop, just for some flavor. I like the look of that. That's great. And there you go. Yeah. Scallop and beet crudo. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to try this scallop because <laughs> I'm really curious to see what, what that's like. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. <laughs> you taste the vinaigrette coming through and then mm -hmm. he takes the beet juice and that's around the Beautiful. Other. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. I like it sliced thinly, thinly mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have the kind of texture a real, you know, fully cooked scallop yeah. would have. Yeah, raw scallops it's are very a smooth and silky. Yeah. It almost, it's like melt in your mouth. Yeah, yeah it's delicious. Like you say, the, uh, with the lime juice on there, you said that cooking process, just a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. yeah. Just and the salt. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, listen, uh, it's been great having you on the show yeah, again, thanks for Chris. Me. Thank, thank you. And, uh, folks, that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic, Avocados. Guacamole! Please, Steve. <laughs> <laughs>